Welcome back to the Metal Exchange. This is Chris. I'm here with Justin, and we have a very special guest, Mr. Sander Gomans, uh, formerly of After Forever, and currently working on a number of different things that he's going to discuss with us, but uh, we thought it would be great to catch up with him after our discussion about After Forever's uh, uh, last album, which was a self-titled album that um, Justin and I had a lot of high praise for. Uh, but before we go into that, let's uh, welcome Sonder on with us. Sonder, uh, thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me. Super cool. How's everything going uh, over by you? Good. I'm uh, I'm currently in Germany <clears throat> in my uh, Eternia He Man Cave. Uh, actually, <laughs> working on some music, and uh, the kids are all in bed. I've got three, so that's when my life starts. Well, my my other life, <laughs> you wouldn't like that. So no, everybody's healthy. I'm good. So looking forward to talking with you guys. Very good. I'm glad to hear that. Um, I guess uh, we'll just uh, get it out of the way. Um, you know, uh, we 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 spoke about um, after forever. Like I said, we had almost entirely positive things to say about that last album i was um i kind of went into it not knowing it that well um i was familiar with uh energize me from the music video but um i ended up really really enjoying the entire album i I had a hard time choosing a favorite song um i guess um i'll 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 kind of lead off with kind of just a general question but um i mean how did you feel about this album after you were finished after it was finished um and uh and do you have any interesting stories you might want to share about um the 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 time period around the time this album was was recorded and released yeah this uh, well first of all thanks for liking it that's cool especially Listening to Energize Me, like like you said, it's quite a different song from a lot of other songs on there, and um, and I do like Energize Me for what it is, but it is a, it is a very catchy song. I think it also sounds good acoustically, so that as a song, it's good. But it was definitely my priority to to make this album also touch some progressive genres and and definitely some more extreme genres. I really wanted to dive into more um, to. to to, to get away a little bit from the symphonic stuff and to dive into a little bit different styles, like maybe some industrial, maybe some some progressive, some some death metal oriented stuff, and um, and I think that worked out with, with that album. I was I was really um, surprised with uh, how it sounded when it was mixed because when we were recording it, I was a little bit, to be honest, a little bit disappointed. It didn't sound as huge as I expected it, uh, because we were still working on, on, on structures and stuff. And all of a sudden, it all came together with that orchestra that we recorded in Prague. And that's, that's, when, that's when something really cool happens as a musician, when you write the songs, and I wrote them together with our keyboard player, Joost. When you write the songs and you hear everything coming together and you can listen to it as if it was not your own band, but as, as if it's something else. And that's what happened when it was mixed so that gave me the, the the chance to listen to it from a totally different perspective, and um, and I was really happy with it. But but I def- definitely had my favorites, and Energize Me was not one of them. Um, but I definitely like the song for what it is, and that's a very catchy song. Well, now that you mention it, um, wh- which songs would you say are your favorites that were on this album? I think I think the score is really cool. Uh, next to be, being a songwriter, I'm also uh, a music teacher. And uh, actually, today I was uh, teaching uh, my kids. Um, uh, I, I was uh, playing them "O Fortuna" of Carl Orff, and of course, that's a mighty song. And um, and the score has that same same vibe. Also, when you played that live, when we played that live, it's this intro that has something big, something magical. So that was one of my favorites, and definitely Dream Flight, the last song, which which showcases actually everything that After Forever had to offer at the time. And I think um, it's an adventure to listen to. And um, we re- re- really released that at the time where lots of bands in our genre tried to come up with 
almost radio friendly stuff and i understand why of course it's it's great when you play it on the radio if, even if it's one song you, you can, if you have a hit you can pretty much do whatever you want but i was happy that we that we did the opposite with that song and 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 dove into a little bit more yeah different stuff so that's definitely one of my favorites it's it's interesting to me because as a fan of the band from a little bit earlier on i i had really gotten into you guys before Chris did. Um, so I, I kind of saw a little bit more of the evolution from that really heavy symphonic style that you were doing with some of the earlier albums. I found it I found it to be kind of a slow transition to what would be the last album that you recorded. Did you was that a conscious thing that you kind of realized was happening or was that just a natural evolution of the bands, you know, obviously with Mark leaving early, after the first two albums and, and obviously with your songwriting driving the entire direction of the band did you do you kind of see that happening as it was as it was happening i i i did fear that it might be our last album not necessarily because of the music but because of the climate when when we were playing um i i we noticed and fans don't remember that now but we definitely noticed a decline in numbers uh people coming to our shows because we were kind of a different band, and uh, we 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 didn't we didn't push the the symphonic stuff too much. We also didn't dive into the real radio friendly stuff too much. We had some weird eighty stuff in between because we all liked eighties music, so we had eighties covers. So we were kind of a rock a rock and roll band on stage with a very symphonic element on our albums and i think it was the audience was get was getting broader and broader but had a different mindset at the time i think of what a band like us should be like and so we played the final countdown live and we did foom the bell tours or, or the evil that men do that kind of stuff and it didn't always work sometimes it worked great but i think we were kind of a, a weird setting in that kind of a band world maybe um so 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 that 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 was one of the things where i thought mm, we'll see we'll see how long this 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 might continue but it was definitely uh, the music on that album that kind of would have made way more things possible we could have gone any direction after that album because basically everything is in it so it wasn't really a final okay this is it and yeah, uh, uh, there's nothing possible after that. Definitely not. But you did feel that it was like we 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 didn't really fit into anything at that point. Yeah, you. It's funny because I also noticed a lot of the different elements you mentioned. I think I even used the word progressive in certain spots. Obviously, death, death, or you know, death metal in certain spots. Um, and then a song like "Energize Me," which really is very radio friendly in its own sort of way if you will so you, you touch a lot of the bases so for for many bands i think that they would have actually used this as kind of a launching point to go into the next phase of their career it's interesting that um it would obviously be the band's final record i, I would be remiss not to mention i know that it's being re-released at the end of this month kind of in celebration of the 15th anniversary do you want to speak about the re-release of the album a little bit and, and what the fans can expect yeah, it, it, it was basically uh, um, an idea of, of Nuclear Blast to, to, to do this because they, uh, they released that album. And, um, of course, we are all doing our own stuff. Uh, all the band members are focused on their own stuff. So uh, we, we, we definitely wanted to stress the fact that it, that it was not something, you know, a reunion or whatever. It was a re-release, but, but if, if that communication was, was well done, then we thought it was a really cool idea to do because it was it's an honor for us that this is being re-released and that fans get the chance to rediscover the album, maybe with some new stories. And that's what I did on my Facebook, recording stories about every single After Forever album and other albums so that people know a little bit more about the backgrounds. And basically that re-release of Nuclear Blast triggered that because it made me dive into the history of, of the band. And um, I think uh, um, it's 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 a cool album, a cool re-release because it also contains two songs that people have never heard, and um, and definitely the first one that we that we just released. 
um, is yeah I, should maybe have been on the album even because it's a, it's it's not really a bonus song. It is, it, I think it's a really cool song and it shows all the the different styles that that we've done. So yeah, having kind of a new song which it isn't after 15 years. I think that's pretty special. I would have loved that if, if one of my favorite bands would do that. So we made sure that it was definitely worth it. And also uh, Joost made sure that it was mastered in the right way for a record, for example. So not that we put the same thing on a new product and that's it. So there's definitely a lot of heart and soul in there. And that makes it worth it to me because, you know, that that's not just uh, uh, a cheap re-release, but definitely something that, that has been thought over. So uh, I, I like the... The initiative, and I think it's an honor. And uh, yeah, after we the, we had yeah, mentioned that we um, we really enjoyed the that new track. Uh, it's called "Sweet Enclosure," um, and and you can uh, yeah. you can actually hear it now if you pre order the album. Um, that's how I was able to get a hold of it. I uh, in, in pre ordering the the re release, you can get that track uh, early as a single, and um, I thought it was a great way to kind of cap off you know, an already great album. But uh, yeah, Justin, go ahead. You were going to say something. Yeah, I was going to say after after the album obviously was released in, in 2007, you would wind up coming to uh, the United States. I think you played a, a few shows, but I, I wanted to just reference one in particular at the Prague Power USA Festival, um, which is, you know, kind of a big progressive and power metal festival in the States. Uh, a lot of bands playing their first shows in the U.S. got their start at that festival, and I'm going back, you know, twenty over twenty years now with bands like Angra and Gamma Ray all playing their first shows uh, at that festival. And I was hoping you could just say a few words about that experience before we transition to what you're working on now. Yeah, no, it's it, um, you got to understand. Um, it, it was before that we did a little bit of an LA tour. Only Floor and I did that a promo tour. But um, but but it was a real uh, and, and I think we did the uh, the uh, what was that again in Austin the South by uh, South by Southwest Fest yes yeah. yes we did that oh, before okay. that too but um, you got to understand that the Proc Power show was one of the first shows that we did um, which <laughs> which means that we we basically did the best show in the beginning of the tour because it was overwhelming <laughs> and. It's it's the, the the standard stories of bands touring the U.S. for the first time. You end up in in yeah really crappy venues sometimes, and 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 maybe two <laughs> people uh, watching it, and uh, and that's lucky. exactly what <laughs> that's what happened. So uh, so playing that that proc that proc power festival was like a dream, but it was it came too soon. <laughs> it would have been great <laughs> if that was uh, the the finale, but um, uh, listening to the um, to the live recordings because I think that those are one of the few good live recordings that we have on YouTube. You definitely notice that the audience was into it, that our sound was good, and and I really think uh, uh, it it was one of the best shows we ever did. And it was because we were so amazed by the spot we had and by the audience and by the whole vibe. And it's of course super cool to be in the U.S. basically for the first time and 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 see all these these iconic things that you see in the movies so um for us it was a great experience all around playing with the bands but also experiencing the states like we never did it was, was great that's great um let's, i wish let's i was there i i yeah. <laughs> I, kick my, I kick myself in the ass for missing that um I, I mean, I don't know that I would have appreciated it as much as I w would now, being that I am now familiar with the album. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, there's just it's 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 interesting, like going back and looking at some of those lineups and saying, like, what was I thinking? Why didn't I I go to that? Um, but yeah, like you mentioned, there's a, a handful of really um, really uh, high quality pro shot um, videos from that performance that you can find on YouTube and. I definitely uh, suggest that um, anybody go out and check those out because those are really, yeah. like you said, like really well done and really high quality videos. I really, I really think that I don't know who did it. I don't know who the sound guy was or the camera guy, but those guys need the compliments because uh, that's that's really incredible stuff. So uh, if they're listening, uh, <laughs> fantastic job. <laughs> 
Great. Um, let's talk a little bit about what you're working on now and kind of what you've been doing for the last 15 years. It seems like you've had your hands in a couple of different things. So um, why don't you kind of walk us through the, the most recent history and, and I guess where we're going uh, as we look ahead? Yeah, uh, cool. Um, well, um, after um, playing live all these years uh, with, with After Forever, I, I realized that that was not my, um, my dream. So um, for lots of musicians, that's, that's what they're doing it for. And for me, it was really something that had to be done at some point. But I enjoyed writing songs way more. And um, so, so I had the chance to focus on that. Well, one of the first things that I started was, was my solo project, HCK. And I saw that really as a way of doing whatever I wanted. And I, I started that with, with Amanda. And... Um, Amanda Somerville, and, and basically it also for her, it, she discovered a completely new side because she was working more in some symphonic area or did her solo stuff, which was more pop oriented. And this was really extreme stuff. So it kind of taught us both some new tricks, <laughs> so to speak, and yeah. which, which was really cool. Well, it, it gave me the chance to work with Andre Matas, who is infor- unfortunately not with us anymore. It gave me the chance to work with uh, Arjan Lukas and um, with with so many cool guest musicians that um, that I learned a lot from as well. So so that was that was uh, my first endeavor in, in in trying to come up with with some product project stuff. And then I was asked to do multiple things like writing an album for um, uh, or writing songs for Kiske Somerville, where a man that joined Michael Kiske on a project. For two albums, writing songs for Primal Fears, Ralph, Ralph Scapers, and playing those songs, um, writing songs for Anna, Anna Phoebe, or playing the guitars, uh, violin, violinist. Um, I did uh, another AGK album. Then we started Trillium. Well, Phantom Elite. I can, I can say way, way more about those projects, but, uh, but that's in a, in a, in a how do you, in a, a quick overview what I got into and um, and right now I'm still basically doing the same things I'm still working on HDK I'm still we're still uh, probably going to do a Trillium album uh, we're, I'm still working on Phantom Elite um, and and working with other musicians other bands um, and next to that I'm doing a project called Magical Metal that I'm, that I'm working on uh, since a couple of years with two good friends of mine and that's basically combining uh, all the stuff that I've done so far and more. So I would love to talk about that, but let me know if you've got any questions right now, and <laughs> we can uh, discuss it later. Uh, actually, yeah. I'm glad I'm glad you mentioned it because I really wanted to talk about magical metal. I thought that this was really interesting. Um, where did you get this idea, and uh, how have you found uh, how did, how have you found it so far? Um, working on this this totally different kind of band i i just i i was really really interested in and was hoping that you could tell us more about it yeah this 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 is really a um uh of course amanda and i uh, got married and got three kids so uh, three daughters and when the first daughter was born six years ago um i felt like i wanted to share my passion immediately which was he man <laughs> and metal, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but <laughs> she was still in diapers. So um, yeah, what do you do <laughs> with a kid that that's uh, that's little? And I thought like, okay, you know, I was I was standing there with my He Man figure and with my Slayer album, and I thought, okay, this is <laughs> this is not gonna work. So um, so so that that's when I started thinking about how can you how can you make children relate to these things without making it too extreme. And of course, I realized that you can't do that with babies immediately if, if you want them to, um, you know, um, to enjoy their first days on earth. But, um, but I did think for smaller kids, there's actually nothing really that, 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 that makes them connect with that stuff. So that's why when I started to think about characters, about a story, about a, a story of where metal came from and what the power of metal is and what you can do as a kid to contribute to it. That's when I started writing the songs and working with uh, two friends of mine, Scott and Mano, on the concept. 
And that concept is basically having kids and grown-ups be a part of the metal scene, combining their talents with professionals. So that could be writing music together, that can be writing stories together, making artwork, making uh, computer games, but everything in a certain metal vibe. And that led to uh, uh, several songs that we that we wrote with kids as well as grown-ups that led to new products. We're going to release a guitar book. We're going to uh, release the German Magical Metal soon, where German artists will write. We're going to work in America with uh, one of the He-Man creators on stuff uh, uh, that is that is more story-based. Um, so, so in multiple countries, we're going to try to set up Magical Metal as a way um, to connect kids with metal music in an adventurous way. Because I really feel that um, there are still a lot of cool metal bands and new metal bands are also still cool, but I definitely see the, the kids that I teach, I see metal is dying. And uh, in, in the Netherlands, for sure, there's hardly a new generation that is ready for this kind of stuff. And why? It's just because it's not being presented to them. There's so much stuff, but rarely with guitars, rarely with some more edgy stuff. And that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to get back the 80s in that sense that you know, cartoon themes and all that stuff were still, like the Transformer theme and stuff, still had a lot of guitars in it. As a kid, you already got used to that. When you switched on the, the TV, you saw Europe or Bon Jovi or Whitesnake doing their thing. They don't see that kind of stuff anymore. So we're trying to create an experience for kids to, uh, yeah, to get to know metal again and like it and, and create their own stuff. And that's magical metal. I, I think that's awesome. I have two young girls of my own, eight and five. Cool. And ah. it's, it's, they're at that age where they hear things. And, and it, it's funny, kids are so funny, because you can play a thousand things you think they might like. And maybe they don't gravitate towards it, or maybe they have no interest whatsoever. And then randomly, I'll put something on. And then I'll see them drumming along in the back seat. And so yeah. it's just funny to me, like you never can predict where or how inspiration starts. I have one who wants to play the violin and the other one who I think is going to be a drummer very, very soon. So it's, it's, it's kind of interesting how they go in these different directions. But obviously this type of project, I think will help, you know, kids that are either not exposed to or other kids who may have an interest but don't have a passion yet to kind of jump back into, you know, what we all love as, as you know, as grown adults. Exactly. And, and, um, and, and you, you, you say it, you say it right. It'll, it'll hopefully help kids also that are not connected to that. And, and um, that's what we're doing, for example, this week um, uh, to people we work with. Um, introduced magical metal on elementary schools in the Netherlands. So they're, they're working on a, on a magical metal based project um, that'll take 10 weeks. And that's exactly our goal because that is kids that are normally totally not exposed with this stuff. And I think that's, that's where, um, you know, if you like metal as a parent, your kids will end up hearing it anyway. You know, at some point they'll end up, but a lot of people that aren't into metal, my mom and dad weren't into metal, because, but because there was so much guitar-oriented stuff in the 80s going on, you, will, you would hear it eventually and like it or, or not like it. But, but when you're not into that kind of stuff, the chance that your kid discovers that is very slim. And that, that's sad. Right. I think that's, and that's what we're, we're aiming towards. And it's hard. You know, it's not a band. We're not, we're not promoting a band. It's so much more. And there are endless possibilities. But to... to to create the first base of people that understand this, that's hard work, and that's what we're working on right now. That's great. Um, I, I love wanna that. I, I want to. Um, I just want to briefly shift over to Phantom Elite for a second because Chris sure. and I both had Titanium in our albums of the year for 2021. We happen to love this release, and I cool. just wanted to kind of talk about the, the the origins of that band a little bit and how you got them off the ground and kind of your involvement with that project because it's it seems to be uh, it, it, I think the last album especially caught on like wildfire and it was just the right time for something like that. 
Yeah, uh, thanks, thanks. It's it's um, it's it's really a pity that that right when that was released, basically we were in Corona times. So it, yes, of course yes. you heard that story a lot. <laughs> you, you can't promote yeah. it, but um, well, with Phantom Elite, it was basically one of my dreams come true, uh, and that is working with a band, writing songs with a band, and that band would play those songs live. And I would not have to do it. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's that's where that's where that started out. And um, um, in the beginning, I thought it's probably going to be a project where I write most of the stuff, and it gives the band members the chance to have material they can play and they can develop into an own band. But basically, from the start, it was already a, a cool collaboration with with the musicians. So we released our first album, I think, around 2015. Uh, a while ago and that that's that's really you hear a lot of different styles in in that one but sure. um the the band changed lights lines up several times except for marina she she remained the singer and um and i got to know her working with a different band that a man that did the vocal coaching for her and um uh and i thought she she really had a talent so we i asked her would you be like to be a part of that project and yeah, we selected a couple of band members. Unfortunately, um, they they had to. They, they, there were uh, some some um, uh, you know how that goes in a band. Some issues and 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 new interests and that. So we had to switch members regularly. And then we got to the current members, and that's when the titanium vibe started. That's when I got to work with the current three members um, with with a really new style, which taught me a lot because. Um, Titanium is is modern and it's um, it's it's still progressive, um, but it it is definitely um, it was also a challenge for me to get into that stuff and to write differently. And I think what you hear now is really really a, a how do you say that? I could never have done that myself, and the band probably could also not have done that myself. It's a really cool combination. At their house, it's a really cool combination where everything gets together. But it's definitely one of those albums where I, where I feel like, how the hell did we create that? It is really, it's it's yeah, uh, <laughs> lots of stuff is go is going on there. So uh, we're working on the on the third album as we speak. I think we're going to meet up in a week to to fine tune the songs. And my role is is more and more someone who's fine-tuning, someone who's, who's looking at, okay, what's the core of the song? Do the melodies fit? Is it, is it theoretically right? But I'm definitely not the one who's coming up with um, a whole song and the rest plays it. They're coming up with fantastic stuff themselves. Can we expect yeah, to see I, I mean, uh, I, I, some I, live I just, performances? Like just, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Justin. Yeah, no problem. Can, can we expect to see some live performances once the new album takes shape? Uh, I, I just figured uh, because of COVID and because of kind of what didn't happen with the last release, it would seem fitting for uh, now would be the no better time than, than the next album, I suppose. Yeah, absolutely. I, uh, there, there would have been a performance actually uh, last, um, last Saturday, but uh, there was a big female front of festival in Belgium, one of the biggest got cancelled because of not enough pre-sales and there was Taria and Lacuna Coil, I mean all these big names so it shows you what's happening people are still afraid to buy tickets or the tickets might be too expensive or um, people are waiting till the last minute but of course that's, that's difficult for a festival to rely on so the whole Corona thing might be kind of over but it's far from over because you see things like that happening so Unfortunately, that show got cancelled, but I got him on um, a tour with Rhapsody, which um, has also been cancelled. Rhapsody of Fire, actually, has also been cancelled um, two times, I think, now. And But that tour is still taking place, so working on new days, uh, dates. So they're going to tour with, um, with Rhapsody and Nightmare, the French band. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, they're, they're, they're going to do as many shows as they can, but everything is starting up at this point. Great. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like Justin said, uh, I, I really enjoyed this album a lot and, um, I, I had not heard the first album. So this one kind of, uh, caught me by surprise. Um, 
I I know uh, Marina was um, she must have posted on her social about the singles before the album came out, and when I heard it, I was like, oh, this is um, this is something we're going to need to pay attention to when the full album comes out, and and it was I was just really impressed with it. I enjoyed it a lot. I I, I didn't know that you were involved in it, so that's that's cool to hear. Um, yeah, yeah, very. The, the, I enjoyed it a lot. Yeah, great album. Cool. Thanks. Cool. Um, can we expect any new music from uh, you know that HDK project? I know it's been probably about eight or nine years since uh, Serenades of the Netherworld came out. Is that something that you are uh, kind of going to dive back into, or at this point, is that did you get that out of your system? And you want to go in a different direction? No, no. I actually wrote the album. The album is totally ready. Um, oh, great, so, great. Yeah, but the, um, it, it's it's it, this time it's 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 again a. a a little bit back to the first one when it comes to to, to the heaviness of it is it's it's pretty it's pretty dark it's it's really heavy but um um it's the, the music world is constantly changing and i made it myself very i'm i'm, I'm a realist I'm, I'm i don't i don't um expect people to be ready for whenever i release an album and buy it and love it and never show myself live so i mean i understand what what the handicap is if you don't want to play live like me and you still want to create your, your work you still want to work on songs because i love it then you can't have huge expectations and that that's what it is right now with with this this new hdk album i i'm trying to find a way to release it um and use it uh, uh the, the, in, in, yeah, how do you say it? give it the biggest potential it has and um, and that's where you have to wonder yourself: Do you do you really want to release an album, or do you want to release song by song, or do you just want to release it whenever you want to release it? And I'm not sure yet. Uh, it's mm-hmm. it's 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 one of those things where um, where w- the music scene is really changing day by day, and you can only release something once. You can't. You, you, well, except for 15 years later with an After Forever <laughs> re-release. <laughs> Uh, but, that's right. but that's a different thing. But, but so I released one song now that's called Borderland. But because um, uh, the lyrics were too extreme, uh, YouTube didn't want to promote it. So we had to, to redo the video. And, and I think we're going to post it tomorrow or something like that. So it, it's also that kind of stuff. Companies like YouTube and Spotify, they have become so powerful that you need them. But if it doesn't fit within their guidelines what are you going to do then? And, 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 and that's something that is that right now that, that I'm just checking out, like, how can we, could we, uh, for example, what, what we're going to do now, we're going to release those songs through magical metal. And we're going to create a new concept called serenades of the netherworld, like our last ATK album. And we're going to invite, um, bands in kind of the same style, to take part of that and and build um, something cool together. So also build our own playlist, build our own community so that we uh, promote each other instead of every band trying to promote itself constantly. And that is what what I'm going to use the AZK stuff for. uh, and, And that's why it needs time because, like I said, everything is changing constantly. And I just want to do it at the right moment where it makes the most sense. And um, that means first uh, we've got to have this re-release uh, uh, done with After Forever. And uh, we're going to have the German part of Magical Metal done. And then more and more HCK stuff can be released after that. But it, it'll take some time. And it's, it, I guess it's the positive and the negative side of, of all the things. When you don't play live, when you're not dependent on any life income, you can do whatever you want. But it also means... Sometimes it just takes a long time, and yeah, that's uh, <laughs> that's uh, just the way it is. But it's it's ready. It's done. All the songs are written and recorded. Great. We, we look forward to it. It seems to be a common um, s- story or theme that we have heard from a number of artists who either have projects that don't play live or projects that they you know recorded music, but the timing was not right for a release for any number of reasons, and it. It's it's all those business issues, which are very interesting, but at the same time, 
very much of a headache for those that are uh, involved with wanting to wanting to have their music heard by the masses. Yeah, it's um, and this is why things like this are super cool because uh, merely the fact that you mention uh, Phantom Elite and um, and that you heard the album is already for me uh, um, gives me a boost and and um, to be you know to be able to hear that you enjoyed the last After Forever album so much or any that kind of stuff is. Um, it's, it's cool to hear, and, and there's so much information lately online that, that you don't see, you, you don't see that anymore that, that much because you're, you're, you gotta do so much as a musician. You gotta, you gotta be aware of promotion. You gotta be aware of this, of that. Keep up your social channels. Keep up your, you know, take care of your family that you don't really get to speak to the people that actually listen to your music. And uh, I think that's also something that, uh, that I'm missing out on, of course, when you don't play live, you don't you, you don't get that chance that often. Mm. So that's basically my own fault. But it is something that I notice. Like, yeah, this this stuff is important to hear, and it's cool to hear. Well, we'll be happy to talk to you anytime you want to talk to us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll give you a call. <laughs> um, nice. I I want to I want to kind of circle back to to. Um, after forever and and just ask um what the other members of the band are up to nowadays if you even know i mean clearly we probably yeah. don't need to mention floor since we're <laughs> we're pretty sure yeah. we know what she's been up to <laughs> there's, um, there's but, this, uh, this little this little band that she's playing and i forgot the name but she's, yeah she's doing uh, well, okay. yeah before yeah. actually before before you answer that um I, I kind of know what the answer is, but I figured you might as well ask anyway. Are you at all surprised at th- at the success that she's enjoying? No, no, no. I mean, she she's been she's been one of the one of the biggest talents always in in, in this scene, and she's also always wanted to be um, a part of it. And um, and and there was little that she would not do to um, to reach that. So I think I think it's also well deserved. Um, this is something that this is also something that that really not a lot of singers can do when you look at Nightwish, you know, because they switched with Daria to a different singer, to Annette, and it's a completely different vocal style. So you're, there you have it. You have you got you know high quality opera stuff, and then all of a sudden poppy stuff. Try to find a singer that can combine these two things, and it worked out. And there are not not a lot of singers that can do that. So um, I think the combination with the drive that um, that Thomas has of, of Nightwish and, and, and the vision especially, uh, I mean, I, I got to know the guys during our tours with Nightwish and uh, they, they mean business, you know, and they're very talented, but they're also really, really nice people. So I, uh, I really, uh, it, it's, it's, it's cool that they're still doing what they're doing and still, yeah, actually, being one of the modern classics at this point, which is which is cool. Absolutely, yeah. We spoke about them actually um, a little bit before uh, we talked about the After Forever album, just because uh, I had just seen them perform in uh, Toronto um, just last weekend, or last week, I should say, and we were kind of we thought it would just kind of uh, flow nicely into the episode since Floor was involved in the show that I was at and this album. And, um, you know, it, you, I think you just echoed kind of a lot of what we had to say just about, um, especially about finding a vocalist that kind of covers the ground of the two, the first two vocalists and makes it feel like you don't necessarily miss either one of those first two. Um, yeah. How yeah. about, how about the other, uh, the other, um, members of After Forever uh, have they been? Uh, did they continue uh, working in 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 the music industry? Or did they go on to do anything else? Just uh, just yeah. curious. I know I know Eust is um is still very you know very involved in in um in the metal world and and uh, I know he was part of um the Star One project with with Aaron um Lucasin so uh yeah just kind of give us a little update on how uh sure. everybody's doing yeah. and what they're up to yeah yeah y- Yost has always been very driven since since he uh, he became a, a part of the band he was also always producing in the tour bus 
basically other bands. So he's in that sense uh, really a self-made producer, and it's cool to see how how that worked out. Um, and yeah, he's, he's he's doing he's doing really cool stuff. Uh, Bass, uh, the other guitar player, uh, is, play, is playing with Doho, and and that's that's really cool because he he's always been uh, someone who wasn't really about writing songs or anything like that, but really did enjoy the life aspect. And and he is a showman and a great guitar player, so that's the perfect band for him to shine. So um, and that has worked out for years now for him. Uh, which is which, which is awesome, um, Andre. Um, ac- actually, on, Andre is the best musician of the whole band. He's he's um, he's, he's our drummer, um, but he could play the guitar really well and the bass, and he's got a lot of vision for things as well. So he did did guitar in in a couple of bands. He, he's still playing, kind of a. Um, uh, he's still seeing that as, as a hobby, not as a living. So he's doing cool uh, tribute uh, things and, and, and cover bands. But I'd like to, to see him do more, uh, to see him do bigger stuff because he, 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 really, he really has a lot of talent. Um, and Luke, um, a bass player, uh, also has a family. Um, so that has priority, but he's also still playing here and there in some bands. He's doing some bass, also a great bass player, but also decided that that was to be his hobby. And, uh, yeah, so, so, so everybody is absolutely still making music, um, but on several levels. And, uh, it's cool to see that no one said it, said goodbye to music. Definitely. That's great. Yeah. Thanks for, uh, sharing that with us um is there anything that you would like to say um before we wrap up anything you want to share with the fans do you have any comments about the re-release of the album do you have anything you want to plug anything um any of your social medias this is your chance to just say yeah. whatever you feel or whatever <laughs> you want to get out there um go for <laughs> it yeah no, i i just want to want to mention that um that that this whole uh, re-release thing triggered uh triggered me making some um, some videos about all the after forever albums with throwbacks to that but also uh trillium and phantom elite i'm gonna do way more videos about how how an album like that actually comes to comes to yeah how do you say that how you how you create that and so check out uh, my facebook channel for that i think that that that's that shows kind of a cool um yeah, uh, um, a cool uh, uh, insight in, in, in what we were thinking at the time doing all these albums. Um, and next to that, I, I, I would think it's cool if you check out Magical Metal and if you've got any kids or people wanting to be involved in that, writing songs along with us, send us a message. Uh, feel free to send us a message and we'll definitely react. And um, yeah, keep checking Phantom Elite um they're they're gonna come up with a really cool new album when you have the chance to uh to see them live yeah see them live and of course then we've got azk trillium we've yeah there's so much things i'm involved in i'm not gonna plug all that stuff but i think um that um the last thing that i want to say is just the fact that i can do all these things is because of you guys and people might that might be listening uh, I mean, it's very simple. If no one had ever heard of After Forever or bought our albums, I would never have had the freedom and the, the self, how do you say that, the self-confidence to to really focus on this. So um, in my life, and also meeting Amanda, uh, who was actually the vocal coach of Floor and, and, and wrote, wrote a lot of stuff, a lot of lines, uh, uh, vocal lines and stuff for the After Forever albums. I mean because of everybody i met her got married have three kids so basically i owe a lot to uh all music fans out there so thank you well i, I couldn't That's, have summed it up any better yeah. myself that uh <laughs> that, that, that i think we'll we'll end there because <laughs> i i, I did we, we've, we've hit the high point and uh obviously your life has changed for the better because of all these things and it was kind of this whole 
coming together of, of, of passion and obviously, uh, you know, people in your life and, and, and you are where you are now as a result. So God, you know, God bless for that. And, uh, thank you for spending uh, the last 45 minutes or so with us. We really appreciate it. And, um, we'll include the social media links in our links so people can find you. Uh, anyone that enjoyed the show that may not be familiar with some of your work, they'll know where to find you now. So, uh, again, we appreciate the time and we'll catch up with you soon. Really cool, guys. Thanks a lot, and good luck with your show. Thank you. And uh, please send our best to Amanda as well. We, we are big fans of hers and look forward to uh, anything that she's involved with as well. Cool. Cool. Thank you very much. I definitely will. Thank you. Thanks, Sandra. We night. appreciate your time. Bye. Bye.